Life's journey begins with a single cell, but the story of our sexual development starts even before that, with specialized cells called primordial germ cells, or PGCs. These remarkable cells, the precursors to sperm and eggs, embark on an incredible journey from the yolk sac, an early structure outside the developing embryo, towards the gonadal ridges, which will eventually give rise to the testes in males and ovaries in females. Around week five of embryonic development, PGCs begin their migration, guided by chemical signals, much like tiny adventurers following a treasure map. By week six, they arrive at their destination, the gonadal ridges, where they will play a critical role in determining our sexual fate. This migration is no small feat. It's a testament to the intricate orchestration of development, highlighting the remarkable precision with which our bodies are built. The significance of PGCs cannot be overstated. They carry the genetic blueprint for future generations, ensuring the continuation of our species. Their early segregation from other cell lineages may serve as a protective mechanism, shielding them from signals that could alter their destiny and ensuring the integrity of the germline. Understanding the origin, migration and significance of PGCs provides a foundation for comprehending the complexities of sexual development. It's a journey filled with wonder, revealing the intricate dance of cellular processes that shape who we are. The arrival of PGCs at the gonadal ridges marks a pivotal moment in sexual differentiation. In males, the presence of a Y chromosome sets in motion a cascade of events leading to the development of testes, the primary male sex organs responsible for producing sperm and testosterone, the male sex hormone. Within the male gonadal ridge, specialized cells called Sertoli cells begin to form. These cells will play a crucial role in nourishing and supporting developing sperm cells. Simultaneously, another structure, the rete testis, develops forming a network of delicate tubules that will eventually connect the developing testes to the duct system responsible for transporting sperm. Around week seven, the testes begin their descent from the abdomen, guided by a fibrous cord called the gubernaculum. This descent is crucial for proper sperm development as the cooler temperature of the scrotum provides an optimal environment for spermatogenesis. By week 28, the testes usually reach their final destination destination within the scrotum. The development of testes is a tightly regulated process involving a complex interplay of genetic and hormonal factors. It's a remarkable example of how nature orchestrates the formation of intricate structures with incredible precision. In contrast to males, the journey towards female sexual differentiation is characterized by the absence of the Y chromosome. In the absence of the Y chromosome signaling, the gonadal ridges embark on a different developmental pathway, leading to the formation of ovaries, the female gonads responsible for producing eggs and female sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Around week six, the lack of the Y chromosome-specific SRY gene allows for the differentiation of the gonadal ridges into ovaries. Within the developing ovaries, primordial germ cells, which arrived earlier, differentiate into ugonia, the precursors to eggs. These ugonia undergo rapid mitotic divisions, increasing their numbers significantly. Unlike spermatogenesis in males, which continues throughout life, eugenesis, the process of egg formation, begins during fetal development and ceases before birth. By week 20, all the ogonia a female will ever have are formed, and they enter a resting phase, waiting for puberty to resume their development. The development of ovaries is a testament to the remarkable plasticity of the developing embryo. It highlights how the absence of a single chromosome can trigger a vastly different developmental program, leading to the formation of distinct sexual characteristics. The early stages of genital development are characterized by an intriguing paradox. Both males and females start with the same basic structures. This initial period of indifference, where external genitalia appear neither distinctly male nor female, highlights the shared origins of our sexual anatomy. This indifferent stage lasts until about week seven of gestation. This shared blueprint consists of four key structures, the genital tubercle, the labiosclerotal swellings, the urogenital folds, and the cloacal fold. 
Think of it as a sculptor starting with a block of clay. The basic form is there, but the final masterpiece depends on the artist's hand. The genital tubercle, a small protrusion, will eventually develop into the clitoris in females or the penis in males. The labioscrotal swellings flanking the genital tubercle will become the labia majora in females or the scrotum in males. The urogenital folds located beneath the genital tubercle will form the labia minora in females and contribute to the urethra in males. Finally, the cloacal fold will separate into the anus and the urogenital sinus. This initial undifferentiated stage is a testament to our shared developmental heritage, emphasizing that male and female pathways diverge from a common starting point. Section 5 Sculpting Male, External Genitalia, a step-by-step -step process. Around week 7, under the influence of testosterone produced by the developing testes, the indifferent external genitalia begin their transformation into distinctly male structures. Think of it as a sculptor meticulously shaping the clay, bringing out the finer details of the male form. The genital tubercle elongates and develops into the penis. The labioscrotal swellings grow towards each other and fuse, forming the scrotum, the sac that will eventually house the testes. The urogenital folds also fuse, creating a tubular structure that extends along the underside of the penis, forming the penile urethra. This intricate process of fusion and elongation is crucial for the formation of functional male genitalia. Any disruptions during this critical period can lead to developmental abnormalities, highlighting the delicate balance required for proper sexual differentiation. By week 12, the male external genitalia are fully formed, showcasing the remarkable transformation that has taken place from the initial indifferent stage. Section 6 Shaping Female External Genitalia – Nature's Delicate Touch in the absence of testosterone, the indifferent external genitalia follow a different path, developing into female structures. It's a process as intricate as sculpting male genitalia, but instead of dramatic fusions, it involves more subtle remodeling. The genital tubercle elongates slightly to become the clitoris, the female erectile organ. The labioscrotal swellings remain unfused, forming the labia majora, the outer folds of skin surrounding the vaginal opening. The urogenital folds also remain separate, developing into the labia minora, the inner folds of skin that protect the vaginal opening. This process of development highlights the importance of hormonal signaling in sexual differentiation. While male genitalia require testosterone for their formation, female genitalia develop in its relative absence. This demonstrates the remarkable ability of our bodies to respond to subtle cues, shaping our sexual anatomy with remarkable precision. By week 20, the female external genitalia are fully formed, reflecting the intricate interplay of genetic and hormonal factors that orchestrate our development. Section 7 Cryptorchidism – When Testes Lose Their Way The journey of the testes from the abdomen into the scrotum is a crucial one, essential for their proper function. However, in some cases, this journey is interrupted, leading to a condition known as cryptochidism, or undescended tests. Cryptochidism affects about 3% of full-term baby boys and up to 30% of premature baby boys. In most cases, the undescended testicle is located in the inguinal canal, the passageway between the abdomen and the scrotum. However, in some instances, it may be located higher in the abdomen or even in other parts of the body. The exact cause of cryptoarchidism is unknown, but it's thought to be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Premature birth, low birth weight and family history of cryptoarchidism are all known risk factors. If left untreated, cryptoarchidism can lead to infertility and an increased risk of testicular cancer. Fortunately, in most cases, it can be corrected with surgery, allowing the testes to descend into the scrotum and function normally. Section 8. Hypospadias, a case of misplaced urethral opening. Hypospadias is another common congenital abnormality affecting male genitalia, characterized by an abnormal positioning of the urethral opening. 
Instead of being located at the tip of the penis, the opening may be found on the underside of the penis, anywhere from just below the tip to the scrotum. This abnormality arises from incomplete fusion of the urogenital folds during fetal development. The severity of hypospadias can vary widely, with some cases being so mild they go unnoticed, while others can significantly impact urinary function and sexual intercourse later in life. The exact causes of hypospadias are not fully understood, but like cryptoarchidism, it's thought to be a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors. Exposure to certain environmental toxins, such as pesticides, during pregnancy has been linked to an increased risk of hypospadias. Treatment for hypospadias typically involves surgery to correct the position of the urethral opening and reconstruct the penis to achieve a normal appearance and function. The timing and complexity of the surgery depend on the severity of the condition. Section 9. Paramesonephric duct. Fusion failures, a female-specific concern. While cryptoarchidism and hypospadias predominantly affect males, females are not exempt from developmental abnormalities of the reproductive system. One such condition arises from the incomplete fusion of the paramesonephric ducts which play a crucial role in forming the female reproductive tract. In females, the paramesonephric ducts develop into the fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix, and upper part of the vagina. Failure of these ducts to fuse properly can lead to a range of abnormalities, including a double uterus, a bicornuate uterus, heart-shaped uterus, or a septate uterus, uterus divided by a wall of tissue. These abnormalities can potentially cause difficulties in conceiving or carrying a pregnancy to term. They may also increase the risk of pregnancy complications such as preterm labor or miscarriage. The exact causes of paramesonephric duct fusion failures are still being investigated, but genetic predisposition and exposure to certain environmental factors during fetal development are thought to play a role. Treatment for these abnormalities depends on the specific type and severity of the defect. In some cases, surgical intervention may be necessary to correct the abnormality and improve reproductive outcomes. Understanding these developmental processes is crucial not only for medical professionals, but also for the general public. It allows for informed decision-making regarding reproductive health, early detection of potential issues, and a greater appreciation for the complexities of human development.